And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter. The gallbladder is an organ situated under the rib cage next to the liver and pancreas. It stores bile, which is a liquid made by the liver to emulsify or suspend fats in a watery solution or to make the fats water soluble. The gallbladder contracts and forces bile into the small intestine when we eat, and so removal of a diseased gallbladder has several different names, and they can include things like open cholestectomy, laparoscopic cholestectomy, or even just cholestectomy. Surgery is done to remove a gallbladder that is infected, inflamed, blocked, or filled with gallstones, and this is often referred to as cholecystitis. During the surgery, the vessels and tubes, which are the cystic duct and artery, to and from the gallbladder are cut and the gallbladder is removed. The tube, which is the common bile duct that drains the digestive fluid, which is bile, from the liver to the small intestine, or the duodenum, is examined for blockages or stones, and since the reservoir for the bile is gone, which is the gallbladder, the liver dumps the bile into the intestine. People can live normal lives without their gallbladder because the common bile duct, which is found superior to the gallbladder on the visceral side of the liver, enlarges to assume the bile storing role and this duct goes right into the intestine. So without a gallbladder, bile drips into your intestines all day long. Normally, in response to a fatty food being consumed, bile is produced by the liver and concentrated and released from the gallbladder. However, people who have had their gallbladders removed do not get this burst of bile, so in order to reproduce this infusion of bile, it's often recommended that individuals without a gallbladder take bile salts with fatty meals. And so two naturally occurring bile salts often used in these preparations alone or in combination are chenodeoxycholic acid and ursodeoxycholic acid. Bile salts are steroids with detergent properties which are used to emulsify lipids and food passing through the intestine to enable fat digestion and absorption through the intestinal wall. They're secreted from the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and passed through the bile duct into the intestine when food is passing through. Oftentimes, the removal of the gallbladder, which is known again as a cholecystectomy, alters bowel function. Many people experience other gastrointestinal symptoms called post-cholecystectomy syndrome after their gallbladders are removed. The most common complaints are bloating, gas, diarrhea, and pain in the upper abdomen. Many people find a decrease in the amount of time stool remains in the large intestine, and the number of bowel movements also increases, and also the consistency of the stool is less solid. Fortunately, these symptoms seem to pass with time. And so, again, the main function of your gallbladder is to store, concentrate, and excrete bile that is produced by the liver. Under normal circumstances, eating signals the gallbladder to contract, releasing bile into the intestine to aid in the digestion and absorption of fat. When the gallbladder is removed, the liver continues to make bile at the same rate and flows steadily to the, into the upper part of the small intestine. This is enough to help digest a normal diet. However, it's believed that the continuous flow of bile may be one factor for the frequent and loose stools that some people experience after gallbladder removal. Bile salts can consequently act as a mild laxative. The continuous trickle of bile can also result in difficulties in handling fats in the diet. Fats and certain fat-soluble vitamins require bile in order to be absorbed, and because the eating response does not dictate the release of bile, there may not be adequate amounts of bile in the intestines to properly handle the normal absorption process of a high-fat meal. So, following cholecystectomy, it's recommended to follow a low-fat diet, although there is little evidence that restricting dietary fat over the long term is necessary to improve symptoms, some people often feel better by doing so, at least in the short term. The body can become more efficient and negative digestive symptoms can subside with time. Each individual will have a different tolerance, of course, and dietary needs to prevent symptoms from occurring. The change in intestinal bile concentration during high fat intake may cause diarrhea or bloating also. This occurs because excess fat in the intestines will draw more water into the intestine and bacteria digest the fat and produce gas. The diarrhea after cholecystectomy may also be caused by excess bile in the intestines between meals. So this might actually be helped by more frequent smaller meals that contain some fat and liver support.
People who have had their gallbladder removed have very intolerances to different foods, so it's wise to be particularly cautious of the foods that may have caused gallbladder attacks previous to surgery. Symptoms may range from burping and gas to a feeling of fullness, like the food is not going the direction it should. One easy way to figure out individual tolerances is to keep a chart of what, when, and how much you eat, along with any symptoms that are occurring. Foods you want to be extra cautious of include high-fat foods like meats, oils, salad dressings, snack chips, or fried foods, whole grain breads, nuts and seeds, and gas-producing vegetables like those you find from the cabbage family like broccoli, Brussels sprouts, or cauliflower. Spicy food, high-fiber foods or supplements, and also sugary or sweet foods too. I am going to cover in a future episode what those missing their gallbladder can do about their diet a little bit more in depth. But for right now, I hope I've shown you what the gallbladder is and given you a basic idea of how it functions. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.